Good afternoon, everybody. How has your day been? This is JP from My Memory Garden, and I hope you guys are having a great Tuesday like I am. Um, here I am, guys. We're just looking at the lawn, um, but we're going to get right to it. This is going to be a walk through the garden, folks. Um, there was no new plants put in, but there's been plenty of plants blooming, and the bloomage is not going to stay. Um, I can already see that they're going to come and go, and I don't know, since these a lot of these plants were just planted last year, if the blooms they're getting are going to stay for long, or if they're going to come back with new blooms after the initial ones are gone. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, and we're going to talk about some of the things I got going on today, guys, and we're going to get this done, and then I'm going to do some more work. Now, first thing I'm doing, guys, is I got a bucket of rocks. Now, Anybody that knows anything about gardening knows that rocks are cheap, uh, inexpensive way. Uh, no, cheap and inexpensive is the same thing. Let's go with, um, they're everywhere. You can usually find them everywhere. This, we think, has a little bit of, I know it might not be very visible for you guys on the camera. Let me see if I can get a little closer. This has got some, what we think is either pink or rose quartz in it. And it makes a very pink color. And I'm going to be taking and cleaning these today. And these are going to go into Jeff and Debbie's garden as uh, decorative pieces. Now, I've got some around my garden, but they weren't big enough. And the, um, the grass is overtaking them. But there are some in my garden. I just got to weed around them so they're visible again. Now, here's another thing, guys. It's a project that's going to be here. I went out and collected some moss today. So I got some different varieties of moss. This is moss off tree, uh, some ground moss. I've got some other kind of moss in here. Uh, I found clumps of moss like this, guys, everywhere. This is going to be the moss I really think I want to work with. And I'm going to be making a moss slurry, which for anybody that isn't familiar with that, that is basically how you make moss in your house. You take two cups water, two cups of anything from beer to um, yogurt, to buttermilk and I have all three of those so I can make plenty of this stuff I'm actually gonna see which one works better and um, we're going to be trying to slather that stuff on after you shove all that in a blender with your moss on top you blend it all together and you make what's basically a slurry and then you can literally paint it onto any surface and you give it about six weeks from what I read and it should if it takes vigorously be growing on whatever surface you do it on well we're going to do this on a couple surfaces we're going to try. Um, but the first one we're going to try it on, guys, is we're going to try it on the back fence. Which, uh, after we take a quick look, guys, at how the um, Japanese, I still think it's called the Japanese snow shrub, is doing. Look at that. Look at that, guys. And the reason we're not getting a lot of good colors in the video today, guys, in case you guys are noticing that, is because currently there's a lot of cod cover here. It almost looks like um, it might rain at any time. We're going to keep our eyes open, but um, I'm actually enjoying this because it might make weeding before I go to Jeff and Debbie's this afternoon that much easier if it's nice and uh, shady out, which is kind of what I wanted this whole time. But I was under the impression it was going to be a different weather forecast this afternoon. Not rain, but excessive sun, and amazingly it did not. Now, I've also been going around and checking on stuff, guys, about the acidity of my property because one of the other properties I'm doing with moss is... I'm going to be trying to convert part of my lawn, which we'll go over, guys, into a moss patch. And it takes a very sulfuric patch of grass. And, of course, my lawn has no, nothing in it for acidity. Nothing. No acidity basically whatsoever, which is probably why I grow the type of grass I grow around here. We call it annoying grass. So the thing is, is that that's probably what my problem is. Now this is the fence, guys. We're gonna be taking some of that moss because this thing gets a lot of shade back here and we're gonna be slapping it on here. And we're actually gonna be seeing if we can turn a chunk of this fence that matches this little thing right here, guys. We're gonna see if we can turn a bunch of this fence into a moss fence. And if it works, it will be phenomenal because that will give us moss over a good chunk of the back fence here and it will give some atmosphere and some scenery to what is going to be another path through here you guys have heard me talk about that from time to time over the last couple of years that we've done these videos um just checking guys on some other stuff as i go along i don't see anything coming up here the red hot poker i bought it late into the season last year which makes me think it was a type of flower that wants to do it in late in the season um, I'm not sure, but that might be it. That looks like it's probably going to be a weed. 
but I'm just gonna be keeping my eye on it. This is where it was. I'm gonna be being very cautious to weed around it uh, and not pull up the root system, which kind of looks like it would be right in here. Um, we, we only wanna pull up the grass and we're gonna be trying to keep this free and clear. So hopefully we'll get that again this year. I love that last year. We'll have to wait and see how it works out. So everything else guys, um, the Columbine over there. Oh gosh, I hope it's just my camera. Uh, probably isn't it we really aren't getting a lot of light out here so I'm gonna get a little closer guys can so you can see what's going on besides we do have to walk down and look at something so the Columbine is going by that's why I showed you guys a while ago plus we've been getting a lot of um, thunderstorms lately so the thing is is that it probably took a lot of beating from a lot of the high winds no activity from the lilac guys but it is looking like it's doing very well and nothing's eating it which praise the lord now unfortunately i did a bad thing and i did not come in here and get a lot of weeding done when we had our flocks out early in this in the spring so that means i'm gonna have to be going by root systems like this that i can find that are obviously where it grew and i'm gonna be having to try to find that in there and weed around it now some of it i can still see looks like i think we if i remember correctly we get a second wave of that actually guys in uh, due time now here's the creeping time contrary to what everybody thought not my viewers because you guys are smart but other people that i know oh we think your creeping time's dead blooms blooms baby so the creeping time is still going but it's a slow creeping time i was hoping for something that would go faster along this whole landscape but no such luck but it will look beautiful over the last couple of years and i gotta come in here guys and i gotta take care of some of the stuff with um uh with the dogwood it's got a bunch of stuff here that needs to be cut out um but i also wanted to check out guys the bellflower that my folks gave me last year is doing very well it hasn't bloomed anything yet but is growing very vigorously now i'd say the change in weather probably did that now i left this one piece of like wheat grass type guys up because it's got this nice pinkish hue to it i've been seeing it grow outside behind my work too i took a picture of it yesterday showed a friend of mine he's like wow that looks awesome and it's because it came out very pink so I've seen that same kind of stuff and it can bloom very, very pink on the top. I wish I had more of it. I would say it's almost a decorative type of grass. So, cause if you look here, I've got some more stuff guys, but it definitely does not grow pink. However, this has kind of got the same hue. So uh, I'd say it's nothing major, but that's why it's gonna get pulled out. Die, buggers, die. Yeah, we're gonna come in here and do some major weeding. The clematis, guys. The clem, uh, yeah, clematis. I, I, was, I just want to make sure I don't get full with the columbine. It is definitely opening. Miss Debbie's was way ahead of mine, uh, but that had been forced bloomed. This is a natural bloom. It's doing pretty good. And of course, we want to look at one of my favorites, along with the cherry blossom tree, guys. Our our uh, flaming hot or I can't remember, I'm just gonna call it flaming hot because I can't remember the exact terminology, azalea. Fireball azalea, that's what it is. Look at the blooms on that, guys. I hope they're coming in good. My screen looks like it's a little dim, so maybe we're not getting quite the, uh, we're not getting quite the view that we want. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I just thought I'd up the brightness there in one spot. Let me actually touch this up, guys. Nope, that's too much. Let me get my shade out. Let me get my shadow out of the way and see if that looks any better. I touched up the brightness just a little bit, guys. I don't know if that's any better, but um, uh, I might show you the contrast of the oranges that are coming out in this. So much, so much orange, and I love it. It's going to be one of my favorite plants going forward. But yeah. Just an absolute gorgeous plant. Sorry guys, I took one last look because I'm trying to adjust the brightness. You go to my camera, which I like other cameras, you can adjust the brightness in certain areas. And I was trying to see if I can touch that up, but it wasn't happening. So nothing I'm gonna worry about. The poppies that I was worried about guys, I just gave everything a little water. Uh, they recovered well. Uh, the tractor trailer truck's going down my road. Um, the Asiatic lilies guys, starting to come in really good everything's looking really good in here guys i'm very happy about that um the daylilies are in there they're going to come up here shortly still not sure about the bearded iris here but if not the bearded iris oh by the way guys 
look at that beautiful leafage that the um the uh oh gosh I'm, the red bud tree is forming now it probably means we won't get any buds from it but it means it's saving energy for next year which yay that's what we want and there's the siberian iris guys it is coming up with some gorgeous new blooms um, I, my, we thank my mother she did a very good job uh raising this so that we could then have it for our garden well i'm showing you guys that i'm gonna pull a couple of these weeds out too i was like i said gonna do some major weeding today but i went out and got the stuff for my moss that i'm gonna be making instead and i got some new rocks for debbie's garden because that's one of my projects now if i was gonna do any weeding this afternoon i'd probably want to do it in here once again guys the the just the overall shadow on my my camera looks abysmal so i'm hoping when this gets posted later it's not looking as bad as it does on my actual thing because sometimes it's just the it's the screen on my camera phone it's trying to adjust to the lack of sunlight out here and it's not actually the camera but i'm just saying i hope guys look at this guy's the blazing star i'm gonna make sure i give it some more nutrients it's doing really well we have some other stuff like i said in here uh we're starting to, i see thistle that's starting to grow we don't want that in there that's a bad weed now on, we've had the extreme pleasure guys we probably won't have it during this video of in here with the um honeysuckle the um hummingbirds i've had hummingbirds coming to the honeysuckle i can i just had one a few minutes ago you can hear them make that little kind of uh tiny tiny, tiny chirp that they make almost sounds kind of like a uh, gargling uh, chipmunk it's a pretty little chirp and i heard one and i turned around and there was i believe the male ruby throated hummingbird i tend to see a lot of the female from inside my house through the window of my um kitchen but the thing is is that uh, i've also seen i think the male today i turned around and he was here and gone pretty quick they love this they're gonna love the bee bomb when it's up i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of stuff that is gonna be their favorites however we've got to take some time to um wait for that to come in it's not going to come in immediately this is a big area right here that needs to be weeded i might just get to this first uh it's driving me absolutely insane um now one of the things that's interesting is is here is the um one of the veronicas it's a very pink pink veronica um it must be a summer bloom i don't know why i thought it was early spring or late spring but it must be because the thing is is that it is totally not coming up it's just sprouting and so the thing is we don't have any blooms on that unfortunately the jacob's ladder is going by hey mr b look at the size of him guys look at the size of that b he's absolutely huge and i think we oh, don't worry little buddy i'm not going to do anything to you i don't know if he's just resting he looks like he could have that he's big i don't think it's a queen but that is a huge bumblebee and he might have that back on him that makes him the uh the rusted bottom bees that everybody's been looking for so yeah quite no that might be part of his that might just be part of his wings i'm trying to do this without irritating him just look at the size of that bee guys he's a pretty he's a pretty little bee i would guess based on the size of these some of these are workers in comparison to other types of bees in the colony and that would be what gives them the size differential so um probably not what i was thinking look at just how well guys we trimmed this last year we pruned it we gave it nutrients we took care of it and bam does it look so much better so much better than it did in previous years and that's because i don't think the current owners that were here before me were taking very good care of it i don't know if they just got it in but i don't think they were doing much to a lot of their trees i think they just let them go by the wayside so we are taking much better care and the tree is responding Ah, uh, so many jerks in my neck of the woods with their stupid cars. And I could make many, many comments about big trucks and small. Oh, we won't go there. But let's see if the Mr. B will let us get another good look at him, guys, from the side. Hey, Mr. B. How's it going? He probably won't hurt us as long as we don't mess with him. Looks like he's taking a break. Because the thing is, is that he doesn't seem to be trying to get any pollen from there. And I don't think he's worried about me, even though I'm around here. Because I've walked away from many times and he doesn't seem to be bothered by me. But my guess is he's just taking a break. Probably like any any insect, 
every once in a while your wings gonna hurt and he's big so he's probably carrying on a lot of weight if you're like me you'd be at uh 264 pounds roughly trying to carry my own weight i don't think i could do it very much but that's so far guys what we got going on with the gardening uh let me double check and think but to be honest we don't really have much else i wanted everybody to see the azalea the fireball azalea there um i wanted everybody to get a good look at that check out our poppies see that we had some more growth on the um bell flowers that my mother gave me out front see that we had some blooms coming out of the clematis um we still have the catmint right in front of us that's doing amazingly well um we got more blooms out of the um campion also known as the maltese cross over there with the beautiful yellow um columbine that's still coming up and we definitely got to look at the honeysuckle it's doing amazingly well um and we took a look at that now i also uh like i said i bought some beer so i loathe the smell of beer i can't even stand it it actually makes me sick I'm not a big fan of alcohol. My system is very clean. I don't have alcohol in any shape and form unless it's been put into something for cooking and then been cooked out, which means basically the, the fermented stuff has been cooked out. So, um, but I don't touch anything of the stuff and I really don't like the idea of using it, but apparently it's the only thing that will attract slugs. What a pain in the butt that is. So I want to show everybody, and that's why I'm mentioning it, that this is where we're going to put some slug bait. Um, and the thing is, is that we're going to put some, um, we're going to put some beer in some kind of cap and then put it low to the ground. So the slugs will stop eating my leaves. Look at what they've done to these things. Oh, it's terrible. I don't like the fact that it, these don't look so good uh, over here. Um, but that's okay. We just need the leaves to keep giving nutrients to the, to the plant, to the root underneath, because we really need those to come up. That's why we can't afford to have... Um, I'm hoping that dark speck in the back there guys with the where it's getting dark towards the thing is supposed to be that way um, If not, I got to come out here and get rid of these ants and stuff that seem to be here uh, Ultimately, we didn't know if the soil was going to be the best here That's why I really treat it with that stuff. I have better than peat Which is basically from what we determined coconut shavings mixed in with some organic um, Plant food and then um, some really good dirt. And the thing is, is that it makes for cheap stuff, but it should have been good enough and it should have been better than it was there. But maybe that stuff won't. Now, if that doesn't come up good, we might still have some safety in this one. But the problem is, you can see where they're eating this too. So we need to put some bait out here because they're going to die. I usually let, I let, usually go with live and let live, but they're going to die because they're eating my plants and I need those to survive. That's what happened to the Kwanzaan, which was over there, guys. If you remember my Japanese one, little tiny um, boring worms, which I think I've determined what kind of worms they are. They are a type of pest. They are a pest worm. Um, I don't remember what they're called, but I see them on certain things that uh, you can buy sprays for that you can spray on your plants to keep them from eating. So I've seen them. They look like little inchworms. And he ate all the leaves, and I think he essentially just brutalized that poor tree. Because I got that early in the season, so it wasn't dead. It was early on, and it should have survived, and it just didn't. Now, one of the things I've been doing, like I said, guys, I've been checking the pH level of my soil, going around trying to see if I can have enough acidity to grow moss. It's abysmal. Um, so I'm going to possibly have to go about, and we'll do that last, guys. We'll look at where I'm going to be doing that. Um, I still can't remember what this is called. Maiden something. But boys, is doing pretty good, guys. You can see the blooms are coming up on them. They're, they're not going to be anything special, but it's enjoying where it is. It's enjoying it over here. Hey, check it out. The Speedwell, guys. It was supposed to bloom white. It re-bloomed a little bit. So I think it's enjoying where it is over here. That's great. I wasn't sure if we were going to get some more blooms out of it or if it was done by the time I put it in the ground. So that's good. Um, even over here, guys, with my blackberries, something is eating the leaves to the blackberry, and we got to stop that too. Now that I'll probably end up spraying with, um, an insecticide I have. Um, now unfortunately, you can see where we're about to get some blooms here. The problem with spraying it with that stuff, I need to make sure probably to use my natural stuff first before the, um, the really good stuff I have, because the all natural stuff isn't bad. But the problem is that I would like to be able to come over possibly and check on the blackberries when they, when they pop up and see if they're edible. And I can't do that if it's got like a pound of chemicals on it. That's bad. But uh, we have some all natural stuff. We'll see if that works better. Real quick on our way by, guys. There's our 
um, what it's saying is a Chinese crab. It's a Chinese crab tree, so it's it's it was an absolutely gorgeous tree. You guys all remember. It's blooming in there pretty good. We got all these little white flowers that are blooming. It filled in dramatically as the rain came in lately. Oh, check out the red raspberry, guys. I wasn't looking at that right off either, but check out this thing. This is doing really well. But something, of course, is eating that. It's not hanging out underneath. It's probably snails. I don't know, but um, it's doing pretty good. But I don't like how some of the leaves look here and stuff like that so i'm gonna be uh i don't like how they're curling back in on themselves now what could be doing that so let me check yes i'd say something I was trying to make a something wanted to make a home yeah right there it had a bunch of them stuck together because i can see the thread i can see the silk stuff something was trying to make a little nest right there in my stuff now i don't know if i consider it a good or bad thing but this is what i'm going to say you guys heard what i just said about see usually i don't mind but a lot of times these voracious little suckers that tend to make stuff like that in here are not good for the plants now, i don't see anything but the tr the plant is not doing that naturally something is trying to make a nest in there and it's going to be sorry because i'm going to come around to all my raspberry bushes and spray it down with something that is just basically a natural insecticide. And it's going to be sorry. Now, um, I'm trying to see, guys. Give me a second. Let me see if I've actually got... I mean, this is the kind of stuff you can use, guys. Seven. You can just use this stuff. I prefer not to. Um, I don't have the bottle for my natural one in here. But um, I do have one that's like that, that's basically like, we're talking lemongrass and stuff that the bugs hate, and you spray it, and it's pretty much natural-based herbicide stuff, and you spray it on that, and that'll take care of it. So right here, guys, between here and there, this is the area that's nice and shaded. We already saw the moss is growing on some of the tree. Um, we're going to try to make moss in here and replace all this grass with moss. However, it means I have to take something like sulfur, and I have to dump a lot of sulfur here. It's gonna be a slow process, but I'm gonna to try to do it. And I have to try to change the pH level of this soil. Uh, we did see something I had mentioned early on in the season that was up here where the grass was like right there, guys. Let's, um, let's see if we can take our little meter real quick before we're done. Let's see. Right there in that one spot, what the, uh, now this is a little pH meter, guys, just light ph level and moisture uh something i'm borrowing from my mother we're very thankful to her so let's take it where we obviously have some kind of moss you guys can see it it's some kind of moss and let's stick the meter in here and you have to really push it down in there and you're supposed to get it down to the 